Hi everyone! So today I thought I would do a, a bit of a larger canvas and you know me, on a canvas like this usually I would probably swipe it uh, because on the length like that a swipe looks wonderful in my opinion or also what I would do is a flip and drag uh, negative space, flip and drag, drag it on the length of the canvas gives it a whole lot of movement and it's really nice, I like it but today, I thought I would go a little bit different. On a long, long canvas like this, I don't think I have ever done a flip cup. And that's what I'm going to do today. And now you're going to ask me, how are you going to flip this? Well, I have another canvas, exactly the same here. And I'm going to make the best sandwich possible with a cup of paint. <laughs> so a canvas with paint in the middle and flip that flip it like that basically and I'm going to use the pigment density method to try and get some cells some effects some lacing because it's always nice I like it and to do that well I have my paints mixed the usual way I have uh, zinc white here Zinc white is very heavy in density. The zinc white pigment is zinc oxide. It's an inorganic pigment, so it's made from a metal, zinc, and it has a density of about 5 grams per centimeter cube of pigment. That's not the paint though. The paint, uh, the pigment is mixed with media, uh, well, medium, not really. It's a acrylic polymer emulsion and that has another density I'm not sure I have never found it um, I'm guessing acrylic makers want to hide their recipes kind of and yeah but that being said the pigment here is the heaviest and all the paints are mixed with the, an acrylic emulsion, a polymer emulsion, so all the paints are, well the pigments are all diluted in an emulsion, so it's probably close to the same density, unless you mix it so the pigments are more spaced out, uh, you mix it with more medium for example, the medium is just acrylic emulsion with no pigments in it, and well I did that for inks inks are heavily pigmented but they are also quite liquid and to get them to the right consistency to do a pour painting I mix them to one part ink to ten part medium them being heavily pigmented I'm thinking it's the densities are probably a little less because the pigments are more spaced out but inks are super pigmented so I'm thinking the difference might not be that much. And for the heavy body paint, I have uh, red, green, and black. I mix them 50-50 paint medium and then 25% water. Also, note that water is less dense than paint. Water is also less dense than pretty much all pigments. And I put water only in my colors, not in the white. The white is just 30% paint to 70% medium. I want to keep the white as heavy and dense as possible, so I'm not diluting it with water. And the colors though, I put water in to help them be lighter in density and help them sell up. No silicone is used in this painting. Uh, I've never used silicone. Maybe I should try it once, uh, see the difference, maybe show the difference, but mm, I'd rather not. <laughs> uh, uh, I got used to, to painting like this and I like it. So yeah, uh, that's about it. Um, going to zoom you in and we'll get started with that. Alright, so it was a bit complicated to set up a camera here. 
Um, so the canvas looks a bit bowed, um, but that's because it's so long. And all right, so I have white paint here. I'm going to pour the white at the bottom of the cup, and the reason for this is the white is very dense, and with the flip cup, the white will end up on top of the other colors. And why do I want the white on top of the other colors? The reason is simple. The white being really heavy in density will want to sink in the other colors and by doing so will push all the other colors up and create cell-like formations like that. After that, I have a metallic paint here. Well, it's an ink. It's a Dalarani ink. I think it's Sun Up Magenta or Sundown Magenta. They have weird names, but basically it's a quinacridone pigment mixed with a white pigment, titanium white pigment, and a metallic pigment like Nika powder probably. Being a pigment mix makes it difficult to know exactly where it stands in density, but that's okay. I have another pigment mix here. Um, this is a Liquitex Muted Inks. And it's a mix of a uh, pretty sure quinacridone pigment and I think there was yellow oxide in there, so yellow oxide is quite heavy in density. Um, any oxide usually are, like Mars Black for example is an iron oxide, I think. So it's pretty dense and, and that's why I put it just on top of the white. And finally, I have a mix of quinacridone pigments here. Quinacridone pigments are organic pigments um, and they're pretty light in density. I'm going to put all the red in two cups and I'm put, going to put the green in only two cups as well. And finally, fluorescent pink. I'm going to put most of it and well, I'm going to split it in evenly. I want the pink to be everywhere, but the green to be just in places to go in contrast, but not on the whole painting. I feel like it would look nicer if it was only in, like, say, two cups. All right, so my three cups of paints are ready. I am going to um, move them, <laughs> make myself some room. So I have a pretty small table. Bring the canvas, the bottom bread of my sandwich. Put the two cups with green on here and then the red on here. Let's try to, yeah, that looks about right. So my cups are placed, well we, we can see at the bottom of the screen, well, yeah. And then bring this over. And Ooh. <laughs> that might be a little bit more complicated than I anticipated. <laughs> hey, I almost made a mess. 
it's just the canvas that fell. Hopefully, I didn't. Uh, the canvas that fell is fine. And now, the cool part lifting the cups. And tilting. Here we go. And now I'm going to give you a time lapse. And meanwhile, I will cover my sides. All right, so we can see that it pretty much worked. <laughs> I even have some pretty cells here with black in it. I have some cool cells with fluorescent pink in it. And my separation of colors really did work. And of course, uh, it looks super li linear and I'm happy with that. I love it when it looks like that. Uh, love the lines, love the, the movement too, um, from side to side, and a lot of cells, uh, and lacing too, like here, bunch of lacing, here cells lacing here, fluorescent green in the black, it's really, really nice, and here those fluorescent cells, the green and the pink, really, really cool. Uh, I really think this painting uh, is uh, something, actually. love the lines here and the transparency. There's white here, but like you see other colors under, and I love this. And I love how the cells are forming at the edges of the lines, too. Like here, here, it's really cool, here as well, and it's pretty lovely, really. I'm a happy painter and it's not like covered with cells but I'm happy with that. I think uh, just a couple cells here and there uh, mixed with the fluidity of the colors mixed with the linear nature of the painting and mixed in with the movement from side to side and from top to bottom. I'm thinking this painting will probably be hung this side up but I'm not sure we'll see once it dries and when I can look at it from every angle possible and decide the direction I want to hang it I think it's part of the decision an artist uh, while well, the creator of the painting makes uh, you look at it you find the way you prefer and you hang it this way and it's one of the decision of the artist, <laughs> the painter. Anyway, lovely painting and we can see the density really worked for us here and it really helped. I think that the fact that I had a couple of dense paint mixed with, with a couple of less dense paint really really worked. Uh, the black, Mars black was dense, the muted ink was dense and the the metallic ink too uh not sure where it ended up it's probably at the bottom with the white because <laughs> it was pretty dense too but the rest of the colors like the the red the pink and the green which is mostly what sold up we can see it here uh really wanted to float while the other dense color wanted to sink and push the other lighter colors up. Yeah, 
lovely. All right, we're back and I'm a happy painter. Um, lately I've been <laughs> with uh, painting a lot with the pink and reds um, and green. It's a Christmassy combination, but when you mix it with pinks and like metallic inks, black, it's not as Christmassy and especially with fluorescent colors like the pink and the green, uh, not as much. Of course the fluorescent colors here are going to dry a little bit darker, well much darker, uh, duller, uh, but that's because they're transparent and that that's what it does. <laughs> but um, I think this painting is really nice. I can't wait for it to dry and I can't wait to see it. Um, well, I can't wait to see it dry. Uh, I think it's going to look really, really nice. And the contrast in this painting is really nice as well. With the green and the pink uh, contrasting and the black and the fluorescent colors. Um, really nice. And I can't get enough of it. So, uh, I think I'll have to do more of this, and if you guys uh, like me talking about the, the properties of pigments or the properties of paint, um, let me know in the comments. Uh, I can talk a bit more about it. Of course, I'll have to do a, a little research to make sure to refresh what I've learned in school, but uh, it should be doable. <laughs> so yeah, let me know if you want me to talk about the what is acrylic paint and how how is it made. <laughs> and yeah, can't get enough of this painting. It's still changing. It's still selling up, but just much 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 slower. But it's <laughs> it's really cool. So yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. And on that note, yeah, that's it. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Um, make sure to subscribe for more and I will see you in the next video. Bye!